When I was younger, it was these two little words, why not, that got me into a lot of trouble. I would either drink a little bit too much, party a little bit too hard, or sometimes go on spontaneous road trips where I got myself into even more trouble. But 10 years later, with time and perspective, it is these two little words that has led me down a journey of self-discovery to reinvent myself and is leading me to be the best version of myself that I can possibly be. Hi everyone, my name is Nadia and I'm the founder and CEO of FitRebel.com and we produce what I believe is the most gorgeous sportswear in the world and our intention is to encourage women to work out more often and to lead happier and healthier lives. And what sets us apart from other sportswear is that our sportswear feature designs that were hand-drawn and painted by traditional Bate artists of Malaysia. This wasn't always my dream. I never imagined that I would be an entrepreneur or have my own business. In fact, I was the girl in the black suit and my ambition was to make it to the top of the corporate ladder. But life had a different plan for me and I had to learn to trust myself, to trust the journey and go down the path that was meant for only me. My journey starts in Brazil, where I was working in Sao Paulo and uh, working in Sao Paulo for an oil and gas and engineering firm. And my plan was to stay there for as long as I can and make my way up the corporate ladder. So I love my life and I love my job. For fun, I was buying Brazilian bikinis and sending them to my friend in Malaysia, where he would sell it online. And it was doing quite well. One day I was on the phone with my dad and I was telling him about this small side thing that I was doing. My dad, he's quite conservative and a bit old fashioned, but he was very amused and he was very supportive. So he said to me, if you see potential in this, why not go and talk to the owners and see if you can be the exclusive distributor for this brand in Malaysia. So I thought to myself, hmm, why not? The opportunity was there. I was already in Brazil and I had nothing to lose. So I set up a meeting with the owners and I wasn't sure how seriously they would take this because I had no experience in retail whatsoever, but I did love their brand. So I had a meeting with them and I pitched my idea and much to my surprise, they agreed. So as soon as I found out the good news, the first thing I did was call my dad and I shared this with him. And he was excited, he was ecstatic and he offered to register a business entity for me in Malaysia for me to do my transactions through. And that was what he did. But unfortunately, that was one of the last things that my dad ever did for me because he died tragically um, soon after. It was very sudden, very unexpected. And I can still remember flying back from Brazil to Malaysia in complete shock and disbelief. So after the funeral, I decided to move back from Brazil to Malaysia for two reasons. Reason number one, um, my mom suffers from a condition called dystonia. So she is unwell and her condition is similar to Parkinson's where her muscles shake involuntarily and she is dependent on others to get about her daily life. So when my dad was still around, it was him that was her, care, her caretaker. And now it, it, the responsibility lies on my brother and I. And the second reason why I decided to come home is because the last thing that my dad did for me before he passed away was to register a business, I felt that it was almost as if his dying wish and a legacy that I had to see through for me and for him. So in 2014, sorry, 2013, I moved from Brazil back to Malaysia. I quit my job at the oil and gas and engineering firm and I launched my business. So after the launch, we were actually doing quite well and sales was growing on a month on month basis. And I thought I knew what the future had in store for me, but I could not be any wrong. In 2014, something that happened that turned my life upside down and not in a good way. I was engaged to be married to my Brazilian fiance and that didn't happen. So as the date got closer to our wedding day, it dawned on him, reality hit him that he had to leave his family in Brazil, he had to leave his friends, his job, his life. And he realized that he couldn't go through with it, so he called off the wedding. And I suppose when it rains, it pours. 
Because a few weeks later, I was in a conference call with the, Bra the Brazilian brand that I was working for, and they were going through a few changes, and I was informed that I couldn't continue doing business with them anymore. So just like that, in a matter of weeks, I lost the man that I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with, and I lost my business. And what took place after that is a period that I can only describe as the darkest and the most difficult period of my life. So just imagine this. I lost my dad not too long ago. I lost my fiancé and I lost my business. I felt as if I've lost everything. The days that followed would be something like this. I would wake up in the mornings and everything that happened would just come rushing to me. And all I could do was cry and cry and cry. And I would cry until I was so tired that I would pass out. And when I regained conscious again, everything just came running back to me again. And I would cry and cry and cry again. Interestingly enough, during this period, the only time when I wasn't sad was when I was working out. I had a personal trainer at that time and we were lifting weights. So any one of you that goes to the gym and lift weights know that when you're lifting heavy weights, you can't think about how sad you are or how your heart's breaking. You had to concentrate on lifting the weights, otherwise you will get injured pretty badly. So whenever I had these sessions, I was fully present and just focused on what I had to do and I was calm and at, calm and at peace. And every time after my workouts, I would have endorphins running through my body and I felt good. So what happened after that is that I decided to work out every day. So I went running, I went rock climbing, I did yoga, I joined a community that played team sports regularly, and I was surrounded by a community of positive and healthy people. Some of them knew what I was going through, and they were very supportive. So as I exercised daily, I started to feel better. As my body got stronger, so did my mind and my soul. So from the first month where I was crying every day, I moved on to the second month where I cried every other day, the third month where I cried once every three days, and by the fourth month, I was okay. And I attribute a big part of my healing process to exercising every day. So when I got back to my normal self, I had to face reality and face the fact that I lost my business. What was I gonna do for the rest of my life? I never forgot the fact and the commitment I made that the reason why I started my business in the first place was in memory of my dad. So I wasn't going to quit. No way, that was not an option. And I looked at what options I had, which were essentially two. I could either try and find another brand to work with, or I could do my own thing. So Albert Einstein said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I didn't want it to be a case where I found another brand, I spent two years building it only to risk losing it all over again. That would be complete insanity. So the only real choice I had was to do my own thing, start my own brand. And another friend said to me once that a startup or a business is usually an extension of the founder's personality. And I looked at my other friends that were running startups and I found that to be true. So then I started thinking, what is it that I can do that is authentic to me that I can contribute the most back to my community? And I thought about my journey. I thought about how I've always been active and how exercising regularly has helped me through one of the darkest periods of my life. And whenever I exercise, I would always wear fun and colorful outfits like that. And on some days, just putting them on made me feel better. And when I talk to my friends, they would also tell me that whenever they had cute and attractive active wear, like it, it excites them and they can't wait for their next workout. So that's, that's when I decided that, all right, I want to create the most beautiful active wear in the world to encourage women to be more active. And the reason why is because if exercise can help me go through one of the darkest periods of my life in a positive way, that was what I wanted for everyone. So, okay, beautiful active wear. Hmm. What is beauty? Art is beautiful, but art has been displayed on active wear in some form or the other, so that wasn't exciting. So I spent weeks thinking about it. What is it that I can do that is special and unique? And one day, it was almost as if the skies cleared, the heavens opened up, and a ray of light sh shone from above down on me with this idea. Nadia, try putting bate on active wear. 
And when I got that idea, it was almost like a light bulb moment, like an explosion in my head, and I got really excited because I'm Malaysian, and Bate is a traditional textile art and a craft of Malaysia, which is my cultural heritage. And number two, Bate is beautiful and it's versatile. So I knew that it would be accepted internationally and that if done just right, I could produce something spectacular. So I got about the business of doing it. I got in touch with a community of Bate artists and I explained my idea. And I think some of them were perplexed, but they were amused and they went on this journey with me and we started the design process. And then it came to prototyping. I have no experience in fashion or design. I had no idea what I was doing. And I thought, because a product like leggings already exists, it would probably take me only two weeks to come up with a prototype, right? Again, I was completely wrong and it took me almost one year. And the reason why was because I was very particular about what I wanted. I wanted the fabric to be soft yet durable. And when we transferred the artwork onto the spandex, I still wanted it to look like hand-drawn and painted art. And number three, because the leggings were meant for exercise, we had to get them stress-tested on different sort of exercise and workouts. So stress-testing itself took a couple of months. And as we're prototyping, you do have your prototyping bloopers. So in this photo here is a really bad camel toe. And in the next photo is a flower on the crotch. So I don't understand why anyone could think that it was a good idea to have a flower on the crutch, but that was what I had to go through. <laughs> so after a year, my prototypes were ready and they were good. And to raise funds, I put my project on an, on an online crowdfunding site and I managed to raise 24,000 ringgit in 45 days. So in August of 2016, my line, Sunny by Fit Rebel, was born. And since then, I've been receiving a lot of positive feedback. The reason why I created this line in the first place was to encourage women to be more active and to lead healthier and happier lifestyles. And that was exactly what it, what it achieved. I would receive feedback from customers like, as the months went by, telling me that when they received their package and when they opened it, when they saw the colorful colors, it made them happy and excited and they couldn't wait for their next workout. And I not only wanted to produce workout that was beautiful, but I wanted to excite and delight my customers whenever I could. And for me, it's the little things that matter. So I would try to find the little things that I could do to surprise and delight my customers. So for example, what I did is if my customers wanted their, their, their orders quickly, I would call for an Uber and get it delivered to them in an hour. And since then, FitRevel.com has been nominated by Time Out Kuala Lumpur as one of the best local online stores in 2016. We have been each, uh, featured in The Edge, which is Malaysia's most reputable business publication. And I've also been featured in Malaysian Tatler. And Female Magazine Malaysia has also nominated me as one of the new Malaysian icons. Internationally, I have been featured in Yoga Magazine of UK. And since then, I have also expanded to the UK, which brings me to the present day and just some take home messages that I would like to share with you. So number one, follow your curiosity. Like I said, I never imagined that I would be an entrepreneur or have my own business. Life showed me a completely different path and I followed my curiosity down that path. And being here today and reflecting on that journey, I know for sure that I was meant to be here and to do exactly what it is that I'm doing now. And my wish for all of you is that one day, if you have inspiration, if something hits you so strongly, pursue it with everything that you've got, and I promise you that you will go on the best adventure of your life. Number two, your intentions matter. So I explained why I decided to create my brand, and you get in life, whatever you give. And my intention was to create happy people, happy, healthy, healthier people. And when you give good vibes, you get good vibes. And to see my movement grow and how I am impacting people in a positive way is one of the most fulfilling things ever. And number three, the little things matter. So I said that I would try to find the little things to surprise and delight my customers.